Hey guys, welcome to Target Eyes. This is Neha Bolgam and on our second episode of the Government Scheme series, we're going to discuss an amalgamation of two schemes, the first being the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment and the second being the Ministry of Women and Child Development. To study the schemes under the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment, it is probably better to understand and get a hang of its structure where the Ministry gives out schemes under three components the first being the scheduled caste welfare, second being the welfare of OBC that is the other backward classes and third being social defense starting with the schemes under social defense. Now as you are already acquainted from our first video when we take up a scheme we discuss the objectives under it its eligibility criteria and other facts that are relevant for the UPSC preliminary examination 2021. And the first scheme under today's uh, Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment is the Atal Vayu Abhyadaya Yojana, which um, whose objective is to improve the quality of life of senior citizens by providing basic amenities like shelter, food, medical care and environment. Um, now the important fact to remember here is its implementing agency is the National Institute of Social Defense. Now before understanding the nitigrities of the scheme, let us understand why the scheme is important. Now there has been a steady rise in the population of senior citizens in India and as projections indicate, uh, these are the people who are above 60 plus in age and uh, in India there will be an increase of the population of the senior citizens to 14.3 crore in the year 2021 and further increasing to 17.3 crore by 2026. Now this general improvement in the healthcare facilities over the years is one of the major reasons for contributing to these um, uh, leap stake increases but ensuring that they not merely live long but also lead a secure, dignified and productive life is a major challenge. And this is where the Atal Vayu Abhyodaya Yojana and several other schemes for the uh, senior citizens come in. Now under this scheme the implementation agencies are majorly the state, the union uh, territory governments and uh, Panchayat Raj institutions focusing on the local bodies and as I have already told you in the objectives they cater to the basic necessities such as the food, shelter, health care and along with that the government has uh, created a, a, a pool of uh, trained caregivers to provide bedside assistance. Now this uh, training and etc is done through the regional resource and training centers where they try to uh, build and strengthen the intergenerational relation gap between the youth and the senior citizens of the country. Now this scheme of course we are discussing because it has been introduced in the year 2021 and is an ongoing process of improvement. And other than this under the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment the Rashtriya Vayoshri Yojana is an important scheme which uh, provides assistive devices to the BPL senior citizens of India. Now as this uh, the above scheme takes care of the healthcare facilities providing um, their uh, regular checkups, surgeries and etc. Under the Vayoshri Yojana we have uh, them providing them with uh, assistive devices to the elderly. Uh, that is also pre and uh, post surgeries. Under the post surgery equipment that is provided by the center we have the artificial limbs that are being provided and also uh, devices um, that help in disabilities such as low vision, hearing impairment, loss of teeth, locomotor disability um, that such as walkers, crushes, hearing aids, tripods, wheelchairs, artificial dentures and spectacles. And uh, uh, a, a key factor here to remember is that all of these devices are of high quality and are confirming to the Bureau of Indian Standards.
Now moving ahead, as the Atal Vayu Abhyudaya Yojana and uh, the Rashtriya Vayu Shri Yojana help in uh, taking care of the daily necessities of the aged and also providing them with uh, devices and basic amenities to help through their life by not being dependent on others. The next scheme is also somewhere related to assistance and providing them with aids and um, appliances but the target group here is the disabled persons or the differently abled persons. Now this scheme is the assistance to disabled persons for purchase which is famously called as the ADIP scheme and the devices provided here again confirmed to the Bureau of Indian Standards and yeah one key factor that I wanted to discuss here is that it's a central sector scheme. Now let us take a minute. I know most of you know about this but let me also clarify that any scheme that the central government um, gives out is majorly in two categories. One being the central sector scheme and second being the uh, centrally sponsored schemes. Now what do they mean? The, center, uh, the central sector scheme is something where 100% funding is by the center whereas the central sponsored scheme is a proportionate racial distribution between the funding of uh, state and the central government. So I, I guess to remember this maybe try and um, uh, look at the key terms here where the central sponsored scheme is where central spo center sponsors a part of the scheme or, or the initiative whereas the central sector scheme this term has no ambiguity in it. There is no sponsorship in the initiative or the program and center takes up 100% of the funding. So key highlights under the ADIP uh, program is that they provide grant and aids to various implementing agencies uh, such as the uh, non-government organizations, the NPOs and several other government initiatives and um, they and the funds are here earmarked for the following activities where uh, for holding the ADIP SSA campaigns that the service Siksha Abhyan campaign under the Human Resource Development Ministry. There are special camps help f held for engaging the uh, differently abled people. Now along with the ADIP scheme for uh, the differently abled, there is one other important scheme that I would like to bring to the notice of you all that is the Accessible India scheme. Now this is a much wider a holistic scheme which uh, tries to make a barrier free and conducive environment for the disabled all over the country. So as we have discussed previously, uh, discussing the need for uh, introducing several schemes under one target population is very important. Uh, this speaks a lot about the priorities of the government, where they want their money to lie and what is the status of their implementation and uh, the status of the development or the upliftment of that particular target area. I, uh, talking about this, I want to tell you that the next scheme here, the Accessible India scheme, the Accessible India campaign is a campaign that is in line with the uh, Article 9 of the uh, UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities which uh, India is also a signatory of from 2007. Uh, now as I have told you let us understand why the scheme is important as this infograph says it's a report card uh, giving the status of the implementation of several initiatives that have come up under the Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act 2016 two years after it came into force. Now. As you can see here, the number of states and UTs that have responded to the schemes introduced are only 24, that is 67 percent. Even though this is quite considerably uh, a good response, uh, let us see the details into the responses where the states that have not notified uh, the state rules under these implementations is 58 percent states without advisory uh, bodies for the differently abled uh, scheme implementations is 50 percent without state commissioners is 37 percent that are not allocated state funds is 78 percent and as we all know for any scheme to take off from the ground the most important factor is the funds allocation where almost 79 percent of these funds are not being allocated from the states and states without notified special courts is 58%, states without special public prosecutors is 
Now I've put in this infograph only to give you a brief background which might help you with any um, mains answer introduction writing as to um, asked when, you know, what are the initiatives taken by the central government for the uh, differently abled people in India and what is the status of implementation of these schemes. Now going ahead, uh, the AIC, the Accessible India campaign has been launched in the year 2015 and it is a national wide flagship campaign to empower the persons with disabilities. And the main key features of the scheme is to make accessible tourism where the websites, booking, hotels, tourist spots are all accessible to differently able by putting up ramps etc. And we have the accessibility clubs which institute uh, the, uh, the IITs and uh, colleges which have accessibility clubs for the differently abled by not making them feel um, you know out of the box. And next we have the uh, technological interventions. We have the Sugamya Bharat Abhyan which is again another famous scheme that has been introduced to uh, be able to take a photograph of an inaccessible place and upload it on a web portal. Uh, this is quite an innovative uh, invention or introduction in the scheme of initiatives introduced for the differently able to understand their needs and come up with custom made provisions for that and we also have the accessible television viewing where 25% of the programs on Doordarshan are to be disabled friendly from here on. So all of these are very ambitious uh, projects or initiatives taken up under the uh, AIC campaign. Now uh, since it has been introduced in the year 2015, most of you must be wondering why I am discussing it in today's video. But uh, this scheme as I have told you because of its uh, low implementation challenge has been extended until March of 2020. Next here we have the uh, assistance for prevention of alcoholism and substance drug abuse scheme which targets the youth of the country who are the uh, majority of the population struck in this drug, drug abuse with India um, being between the uh, you know like the golden crescent and the golden triangle. So um, uh, this scheme's objective is majorly to assist the voluntary organizations for uh, their reachability for example in the states like Punjab where there are innumerable organizations as such held in for identification of the youth, counseling, treatment and rehabilitation. Now this again is a central sector scheme which I know you all know what it means by and that is 100% central funding. Now under this um, assistance for prevention of alcoholism and substance drug abuse scheme where there is this key campaign that has been introduced in the year 2020 that is the Nasha Mukt Bharat campaign. Uh, it is a seven months program and targets 272 districts to bring about the change in and the identification of these districts is based upon the um, Narcotics Control Bureau and um, and national survey and uh, the plan involving this Nashamuk Bharat campaign is to bring about a social and behavioral change communication which is the key component, the crux of actually uh, making the youth come out of uh, this addiction, putting up the de-addiction campaigns because most of them struggle with uh, communication problems in their houses, lack of attention or uh, etc. Now, um, Another key fact here is that this program is being monitored by the National Policy on Narcotics, Drugs and Psychotropic Substances 2012. So as I have told you already, um, the focus of the campaign is to spread the message where, which are majorly about the ill effects of the drug abuse through promotion of family health relationships, emotional wellness and etc. And under this, the initiatives being taken are the bi-weekly discussion and talks held on Tuesdays and Fridays. They have the second inning Saturdays um, and about infographics relating to the results of de uh, the de-addictions that are spread through social media platforms and etc. Next here, we have the schemes that uh, focus upon the welfare of scheduled castes, OBCs, now under here we have the uh, Pradhan Mantri Adarsh Gram Yojana 
whose objective is uh, village development where each MP will take the responsibility of developing physical and institutional infrastructure in three villages and turning them into model villages by 2019. Key facts here to remember is that the launch of this uh, Pradhan Mantri Adarsh Gram Yojana has happened in the year 2009. Uh, phase 1 of the scheme has started in 2014 covering about 1500 villages. Now as it is already given here that the model village scheme uh, is to end by 2019 but given the vast rural development potential that India has and the vast geographical extent of uh, rural villages in India. Uh, the government has decided to extend the scheme and go ahead with phase 2 of it which has started in the year 2018 and plans to extend until 2025 and uh, to cover eligible 26,968 villages. Let me further aid your understanding here with a beautiful infograph. Now as you have, as you have already seen they have a certain target of model villages that they have achieved until now and uh, our Prime Minister Modi has launched this particular scheme on the birth anniversary of the social activist J.P. Narayan and uh, these are the target MPs that they have decided to include in the scheme and now getting into the important aspects, facts are that uh, the scheme includes the personal development human development, social development, economic and also environmental development in line with Gandhi's vision of a model village and this includes transforming Swaraj into Suraj. As you all know Swaraj here means self-governance while Suraj means good governance. And uh, every village development plan here is particularly based on identifying each and every gram panchayat needs and customizing a plan according to it. For this, they have set up two national level committees where one of it will be headed by the rural development minister and other ministries in charge of planning, program implementation and other key factors while the second committee will be headed by the rural development secretary. MP Lad's scheme where uh, the scheme has the fund has come into place for MPs to select a village from their particular constituency and use it into uh, making it a model village. Now you must be wondering why as to the uh, Pradhan Mantri Adarsh Gram Yojana is under the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment and rather not under the Ministry of Rural Development. While there is a key factor in it because when they identify the villages for developing it uh, focuses on integrated development and uh, target population of at least 50% of a village being the scheduled caste population. Now it makes sense because under the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment one of the key components being the welfare of the scheduled castes. So going ahead, um, after identifying this particular districts of uh, majority constituting the scheduled caste population, they focus on particularly adequate infrastructure promotion to include the socio-economic development of these uh, underprivileged categories and also this they do by uh, monitoring the implementation of um, the socio-economic indicators which under the scheme are called as the monitorable indicators. Let me give you a brief idea about what are the 10 domains under these monitorable in indicators because there have been questions asked regarding um, uh, what are the uh, indicators that have been taken into consideration by, while monitoring this particular scheme. The, the question might be tricky where they might just give you one area that is out of the listed domains and you might get confused and a mark lost is a mark lost. So I thought making a passing reference to it, it might give you um, a visual imprint somewhere and might fetch you in the exam. So the first um, area here is the drinking water and sanitation, second is education, third is health and nutrition, fourth is social security, fifth is rural roads and housing. Sixth is electricity with special focus on clean fuel. 
which is the buzzword everywhere now and I'm glad that has been integrated into the uh, Pradhan Mantri Adarsh Gram Yojana. Seventh is the agricultural practices. This eighth is the financial inclusion, which is majorly being done across all states. Ninth is a very key and tricky option that might confuse you in the exams. Yes, digitization is an important indicator under the uh, Adarsh Gram Yojana. And finally is the holistic livelihood and skill development. Now going ahead, another key scheme I would like to discuss for the welfare of the scheduled cast is the Ambedkar Social Innovation and Incubation Mission, which promotes innovation and entrepreneurs among scheduled castes, the students that are from the higher educational institutions. And this has been launched under the Venture Capital Fund for the scheduled castes. So under this initiative that has been launched in uh, 30th September 2020, it aims to uh, provide or select 1,000 scheduled cast youth from the higher educational institutions and to provide them with at least 30 lakh rupees funding for their uh, idea to form into a, a commercial venture. And if this translates into a successful venture, they would further qualify for uh, funding of up to 5 crore rupees. And they have a very proud number that until now, the financial assistance has been given to around 118 companies providing the scheduled cast enterprises to set up business ventures. And I have told you, all of this is done by the Venture Capital Fund working in the technology business incubators. Now the next schemes in line here are from the Ministry of Women and Child Development with the first one being Garima Gra and Swadhar Gra. Now um, I would like to mention here that the Swadhar Gra comes under the Ministry of Child and Development while the Garima Gra comes under the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment. I have put in both of these um, initiatives under one scheme so that uh, you would have a better comprehensive understanding because most of their objectives are the same. So the objective being providing uh, shelter homes for the food, clothing, recreational activities and skill development opportunities to transgender persons and distressed women. Now under the scheme of the shelter home for transgender persons, the ministry has decided to set up this for the people especially uh, who have just come out of the closets revealing to, the, uh, to their families about their sexual identity and who have been forced out of their homes or abandoned by their families. Now this is a very pressing issue that repeatedly happens in India because of the societal taboos associated with the populations of transgenders, LGBTQ and etc. So this initiative is um, a major um, uh, launch in the transgender community and has been recently happened on the 25th of November 2020. Now under this scheme, the first uh, gre or the first home has been uh, come up in Vadodra of Gujarat and by 2021, that is now, the plan is actually to have been introduced several such homes in Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai, Patna, Kolkata, Jaipur, Manipur, including you know the northeast states, and uh, which each home the capacity of 25 persons that are led and organized. These homes are led and organized by the uh, transgender community organizations or in NGOs. And I've told you the key skill is again that they, other than providing basic shelter and amenities, they're also providing skill and vocational education trainings for them to have some ounce of self-dignity and get independent in the due course of life. And uh, next here under the Swadar Gre scheme, which um, is a shelter home for women out of difficult circumstances who are in need looking for institutional support or rehabilitation. 
Um, here it says helping widows in India, but over the time it has evolved into a much larger umbrella. Under the scheme, uh, every district is to be uh, set up with the, at least one Swada Grah home with a capacity of uh, at least 30 women, women in each house. And until now, there are 289 houses set up across the country with 14,378 beneficiaries. Though the target group to reach out is way more, this is a starting step and uh, a certainly a positive sign. Now, coming under the eligibility to be accommodated under the component is that um, the scheme can be availed by women who are 18 years and above. It can be availed by any woman who is in distress without any social and economic support and uh, women survivors of uh, natural disasters who have lost all their house, properties and family in the uh, unfortunate incident or women prisoners who are just out of jail and do not have a family or social support to go to and women victims of domestic violence such as dowry harassment in between uh, a litigation process of marital dispute or etc which is quite vivid and huge in India and also women who are been trafficked and saved out of the racket or women who are affected by HIV or AIDS. Now one key point to mention here is that women who are both subjects of trafficking or have been affected by HIV or AIDS are first to seek assistance under the Ujwala scheme. Now mind you this is not the Pradhan Mantri Ujwala scheme for the LPG cylinders but this scheme is under the um, Ministry of Women and Child Development which took, looks after the trafficked and women that are affected by health. Now next under the Ministry of uh, Women and Child Development we have the Samvedhana scheme that abbreviates, abbreviates into the sensitizing action on mental health vulnerability through emotional development and necessary acceptance that means the telecounseling being provided and uh, the target population being children. So the scheme is being uh, launched by the NCPCR which is the National Commission for Protection of Child Rights and is being um, provided through a network of qualified psychologists, counsellors and trainers of the NIMHANS which is the National Institute of Mental Health and Neurotic Sciences. So here is the NCPCR which is the launchee of the scheme and this is the Samvedana scheme and its abbreviation. So their available timings are 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. to 8 a.m. This is their toll-free number and why I have brought this up is this is the only scheme that I could find that has been linked to the uh, recent COVID pandemic. So as you as many of you must be knowing the uh, COVID orphans is um, a buzzword that has been going around circulating in all the newspapers where children of many categories across the age and uh, social classes and across states have been orphaned leaving both of their parents uh, losing both of their parents to COVID. So in this uh, stressed time if any of them need any mental counselling who are in homes or uh, uh, shelters by the state they can seek the professional help of the counsellors through this particular helpline. And the last scheme for the day and the most and the complacent one regarding the women empowerment, their nutrition and health is the Rastriya Portion Ma, which is a nationwide campaign for malnutrition free India and this is under the Portion Abhayan. Now uh, mind you the Portion Abhayan 2.0 is the recent updated scheme in 2021 and uh, please read up about that in the Ministry of um, women and child development. Now that being a very generic and oft discussed scheme, I thought I will go ahead with the uh, most recent Rastriya Portion Ma Abhayan scheme. Now this, the theme of the scheme is just a complementary feeding to ensure India is malnutrition free by 2022. 
and for this the entire month of September is being uh, celebrated as the Rashtriya Poshan Ma month where um, they ensure holistic development and ad adequate nutrition for pregnant women, lactating mothers and children and the implementing scheme being the Poshan Abhayan and uh, here I would like to mention an interesting fact that the Poshan stands for Prime Minister's overarching scheme for holistic nourishment. So other than these key uh, target areas, it also ensures that the healthcare providers of the ASHA and Anganwadi workers are healthy and also take the feedback from them regarding the implementation around the key nutrition behaviors of the target districts of the program. And uh, that's it. So before leaving you for the day, I would like to present you with prelims practice questions out of today's discussion for the um, upcoming exam in 2021. And the question is, the Sugamya Bharat Abhiyan discussed under the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment has been introduced for which of the following target populations in mind? Is it the scheduled caste population, the differently abled, the, the other backward classes or the senior citizens? And uh, the second question being, the benefit of the component of Swadhar Gra could be availed by women who are survivors of natural disasters who are prisoners released from jail and only women who are above 21 years of age. So, um, so uh, there you go guys. These are the two practice questions at the end of the day that I wanted you to provide you with to evaluate how much of today's uh, discussion have you all understood and made sense of. So, signing off on this note, this is Neha Bolgam. I will be back next week again with another important ministry and discussing all the schemes that have been in recent notice and especially after the COVID-19 pandemic to help you all with the UPSC examination, both prelims and mains. Until then, take care. Bye.